Okay, this is quick demonstration of chapter 3, applying the symmetric fitting into the part to reduce the size of the model and eventually at the analysis uh, time as well. I already made a sketch, you know, using the wide plane, I made a center rectangle and added a 1 diameter hole. So out of the model, I'm going to extrude um, two inches. Put two inches. So uh, even though we chopped three times, so based on x y plane, based on y z plane, z x plane, and also uh, if we made it uh, symmetrical this way, y z plane is as well too. But just for the demonstration purpose, we're going to chop only two times. Under the part modeling workbench, there is a tool. Under thick, there is a split. You can use that function. When split is activated, it is asking you to pick up the element. So in this case, the knife. So I'm going to use XY plane first. Then it is confirming to select the portion you want to keep it. So I'm going to keep top portion. That's good. Say OK. Then do one more time. Split. And this time I'm going to use ZX plane. I'm going to keep the other side. So click. This portion will be kept. And OK. So I got the only one quarter side. So instead of a Four millions not to calculate it. Definitely one millions of not calculation would be much easier and faster. But we don't want to compromise the, the accuracy. That's why we're gonna apply the, uh, special treatment in the FA analysis. Uh, we're gonna apply the material into your part body. Uh, let's just use aluminium in this case. Say okay. And of course, the aluminum material, there are many variances, so you have to confirm that exactly what types of aluminum is. So if you go to property of aluminum, you apply this analysis, you have to find exact numbers of a young, mo young modulus number and Poisson ratio, and density of thermal expansion, and of course, the yield strength, so you're going to use the number as a verification. And this time, let's Simplify, let's assume that you have a one, 10 million psi Young's modulus aluminum and your Poisson ratio of the material you're using, let's say, is a 0.35. And just to simplify your work, let's keep that as a yield uh, strength of the material. If you say OK, then we got the right material. So we are done with the part modeling, then we can re uh, jump into actual FPO analysis. To move to the FPO analysis, we're going to go to start, analysis, and there's a general to the structure analysis. And it's going to ask you to confirm the type of analysis. We're going to do steady analysis. Okay. Again, like I mentioned in the classroom, make sure if you are in the general uh, structural analysis, GSA, your rendering method is the customized one. Once you are in the customized one, uh, make sure the edges, all edges, all point, and shading as a material. This is very important to see your mesh uh, being generated and also the actual analysis result at the end. And now, for the size, we need to apply the proper size of uh, mesh. So we're going to use a tetrahedral gun, double click. And you can see the actual size of a mesh uh, applied as a default. Uh, let's say, let's start with 0.3. And again, my recommendation is around 10% of that size as a sigma mass, so 0.3. Then to again reduce the number of another calculation, we'll, uh, okay, we'll analyze this part later. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make this linear. So instead of 10, you can 
narrow down to the four nodes for each mesh. Say OK. If you want to verify whether it's a fit OK or not for the starting point, just simply go to node and element, you can visualize it. Then after a prompt, you can instantly see it. So point three is not bad. It's not perfect. As you can see, some curvature is a compromise. So that's why you, we need to work on to multiple steps of a meshes to find out what is really optimized, not big, not too big, but also small enough to get the um, close calculation. Since we are the 3D model uh, and also material set in the part modeling, we should all automatically input it. Then now we are ready to apply the purple uh, with train and load to analyze this one. Alright, to analyze this one again, you cannot apply any retrain and load into mesh. This mesh is uh, the virtual replicant of actual model. So retrain and load must be applied into the actual model. So we have to give X-ray mesh there you go, so that we can start applying the purple retrain and load. Uh, for the load, we're gonna. So again, we know this is a chopped one, but we're gonna have the same result, same as a full portion. So we're gonna apply the uh, special load or restrain, which make that the other side is exactly the same as the other one. So that is a special one. You can see there is a surface slider. Next to the clamp, there's a surface slider. So this is the one making that based on the plane you choose, both sides will be exactly the same calculation is coming. So that way you can reduce the huge amount of calculation. So I'm going to apply slider here and also slider here. That makes that this side and this side will be the same as this one. That is perfect. Good. Then for restrain, uh, restrain and load, we are going to pull out, and that means the stretching. So in both directions, again, by applying to this restrain, same thing is assumed in the other side. So we're going to use load uh, pressure there, pressure, and we're going to apply the pressure in this side. So again, this will be the same amount based on this symmetric to be applied to the plane, that means here, and based on this plane, over here and over here will be the same. So I'm going to pick up here, and then I'm going to apply, let's say, minus 250. Minus direction meaning, I um, mean, instead of pushing down, compress, you are actually pulling out, pulling. Alright, say OK. So now we got the restraint, we got the load, it's good to go. But it's not going to work, let me show you why. So once you compute all, a few warning about 3D model, and still we're getting the uh, some numbers of the CPU time. That means at least the elements wise everything's there. If you keep going, and there will be this error message. That means the factorized metri matrix computation. That means something's wrong. The this solid is not actually taking the load and the restraint. That means as soon as you apply this, it's going it is going to be moved away. It is not taking. It's just avoiding. So if it happens, what you have to do is just say OK. Just accept it. And see, by looking at the deformation, see which way this part is not taking. So there will be some uh, degree of freedom not able to hold in in spot. That's why it is uh, just push away. So if you turn on the deformation, then if you turn on animate, you can see it why it is not decompressed or, or the deformed it because it is moving away. So you can see it in the x direction, 
in that square point it is as soon as you apply the pressure is a slide now so we got the idea so once you get that and we can do it we need something we can hold it down so that it doesn't move in uh, in x direction so we can do it by holding a vertex okay, so there's edge a face a vertex can be used as a restraining but in this time we're gonna use this user defined restraint over the vertex right here so we basically pinpoint now so we know the direction of restraint should be in x direction so here's a translation one that refer to the positive the x direction x linear direction y linear direction z linear direction x rotation y rotation z rotation so the direction we're trying to restrain is x direction we'll talk about the more options later so okay we fixed it so we're holding down so that it doesn't move in x direction say okay then we'll do exactly the same thing You can see it, the error message doesn't come out because we are able to hold it down so that it takes that pressure. So now you can see the deformation. Again, this is not real world or in real world happening, it's uh, amplitude. So if you turn on application of a magnitude, you can see it's it's been amplified about eight thousand times so if you come down to an example one thousand time only then you can see it so again still one thousand time you don't see much uh, changes All right, so and it's we are still confirming that this is a stretch so then again then can find out where the stress is really happening as you can see since we horizontally stretching out this top portion of the hole is the most problemsome then again you can see actual amount of deformation where is it really happening and in the class we practiced how to turn this symbol method into The average ISO method that way you can quickly uh, see more solid way but there's also the reason you can or take a benefit of this simple method if you want to uh, activate all those deformation bonuses and translation unlike uh, we we practice in the class unless you want to have a three layer if you want to just keep it one you can actually turn on all of them then in that way you can see at the same time the deformation show as an arrow and also stress as a color coded as well too. So if you get to the symmetric, and isometric, you can put the ribbon translation right here, then stress right here, and it is pretty good representation where and how much the, the displacement and the stress is built into the part. All right, we'll talk about the more uh, examples and different cases through the semester. Thank you.